Hey guys, Ken 97 star 171 back again for a Euro Truck Simulator 2 video. Um, video number two in the series of driving the unique trucks that I bought. Um, um, so this is the Scania. Uh, I believe it's a 770. It's got the uh, biggest Scania engine you can put in it. Um, uh, pretty cool paint job. Got the re again. These are stock. Um, there are some higher grade wheel tires you can put, but in the stock game, these raised white letter. You can make that any color you want, but the raised lettering tires are the the highest tire you can get. Um, didn't want to mess with that since everything everything on this truck is a stock option, uh, except for the lights and stuff, which I'm not worried about that. And as you can see, it's got like every light on the planet uh, available. Um, there, this, the bull bar here on the front is what allows you to customize how many lights and where they're positioned at. Um, so, um, couldn't find the exact same weight load. This one's 34 tons instead of 38. I believe the engine's making 750 horsepower or 770. I'm not totally sure. Um, the same trailer. Um, but, uh, I do. I, I, there was a 38-ton load out of this out of this area, but by the time I got up here, apparently it it, it ended. I didn't notice the time on it. Uh, this truck again has a the, the the front axle is a lift axle. The rear two are drive axles. Um, and just like that Volvo, it's got the fuel tank behind there with the air tanks up top. Again, in real life, in the game, doesn't matter. I don't think I've hauled. A truck this uh, a load this heavy with a single axle truck i don't really think it cares but i just wanted to make the biggest baddest scania you could buy it's got all the lights on the top the round lights are are part of a, a mod pack i don't i don't know what they are the bull bar i think too but um and then on the bottom there are some actually you can't the bull bar is hiding them but there's some there are some you can see the little See the little light sticking out from the side of the bumper. There are also lights. You can see them there behind the bull bar, but they're kind of hidden. Unfortunately, I didn't notice that. That's all right. They don't really throw any light. And then there's lights next to the Scania logo. Uh, that's all factory. So uh, definitely makes a difference at night when you're driving and the high beams go on. Uh, the three, the five little lights. The, yeah, five little lights there above the big round lights on the front grill that does, that's that's an option as well like having the lights and you can see what the hell you're doing all right let's go inside the truck so a little narrower bunk than the volvo no digital mirror option has a skylight again like we talked about in the last one i don't go too hog wild on the interior appointments like people put pillows and hanging shit all over the place and I don't know in real life it's maybe cool but in the game it's just frame rate loss and uh doesn't really add anything to it so at least not for me um all right it's gonna be afternoon so we actually might uh this this trip is pretty short um it's uh only 147 miles so we'll probably get there still in the daylight This one has a lot smaller GPS screen, you know, in the, um, tiny little speedometer there above the, I just don't really understand that. Like the thing you want to see more than anything else driving a truck is what is my speed, especially in Europe with the, uh, this thing going along. Good 
Um, the, I had to adjust the seat back pretty far in this to get the mirrors, um, the mirrors visible. Um, I actually would like to be sitting farther back. Uh, what are you doing? See, this is what I'm talking about. He's just stopping there. I am not, at least I don't think so. I am not in the roadway. Okay. But this dumb fuck is sitting there. And now I can't pull out because I can't make that corner with him sitting there. This is the kind of thing I was talking about with the AI vehicles doing dumbass shit. If I back up a bit, he'll clear. But I was nowhere near the intersection line. Shit like that drives me nuts with this game. Convex mirror up at the top left there, you can barely see out of that. Turn right. But I mean I'm seeing pretty much what I need to see. And uh, by the way, yes, I am right. driving this in automatic. Um it has paddle shifters. Go straight on. But what I found is you need to shift and a lot of times you're spinning the wheel back and needing to shift, and then the paddle shifters are on the wrong side. So I just put it in automatic mode. Keep right, and then turn right. Turn right. Have a little short trip here. That should be fine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see, but I made the uh, the tires on the trailer green. And the main reason for that is um, I have another trailer that's bright yellow like this. And if you're trying to find your trailer, like when you change trucks, sometimes your trailer ends up someplace else or it disengages. So I have to go through the list of trailers to reuse it. And having the green tires makes it distinguishable from the other one. <laughs> um, because when you leave your trailer, at, you know, when you switch, your trailer just goes to some garage. I, I haven't figured out what the logic is exactly. I literally drove to one of my garages that had plenty of room in it, switched trucks, and then the trailer went to, like, the Paris garage, even though I was in somewhere in Germany. It's really bizarre behavior on, like, where stuff goes when you stop using it. I don't know what the Keep process right. is. Um, so, this last time, I didn't do that. I just switched. As soon as I ended that load, I just started using the truck that I wanted, this Scania. It moved me to that, to a, too oddly, the truck was sitting at one garage, and when I switched to it, it put me in Berlin with that truck, even though that's not where that truck was at. It's really bizarre. I don't know. Uh, and then I just said, I found my trailer, said use trailer, and it showed up behind me. So, I don't know. And maybe it's obvious and I'm just tired. But um, I like having a, distingu a distinguished feature on my trailer so I can I can know which one is mine. All my all the rest of my trailers are, like, uh, blue or gray or something. 
So I like to make a bright colored one that's distinctive. Makes it, e makes it easier to find in the list of a hundred trailers because they're all listed as low bed. They don't have a distinction other than that. So you just look for a trailer that does not have a current user and it's going to be one of those and then look for the one that has the green tires <laughs> and that's yours. So these are the two cool, really probably the coolest trucks. Uh, the man truck, I may or may not, may or may not, may or may not do a video on. It's exactly like the one that I drive regularly, my gold colored one, except that it's a three axle version or two axle version. I don't know. It's a bigger axle version. Shit. Um, so my next video, I might try like the Aveco or I have a Mercedes. I have all of them, basically. A, Ren a Renault. Renault. Get ready to turn left. Um, so maybe try something a little more interesting or different. Turn left. Those are all, uh, the Renault and the Aveco are both much lower power. So I imagine they're going to be pretty slow hauling big freight. And some of them uh, don't even have like big axle options or anything. So um, I may just try to haul like a more normal load with those. It's more it's more about like just showing the truck and seeing how it drives. You can't expect a 350 horsepower or 400 horsepower truck to you know haul a 38 ton load the same way that a 700 horsepower truck will. That's not really fair. So. Again, like this thing has like, all the lights. <laughs> I do love that about the Scania. It's probably the truck I'd recommend the most to people. Either find one of the used used section truck of trucks. Uh, there are the mo it is the most customizable truck in the game, as far as like stock stuff without mods and what all without extra things. Um, there's also, if you do want an engine, is it JC's amateur engine mod? I don't know, something like that. Um, there are a huge number of engines you can put in a Scania too that are not stock. But it has some nice engines on the stock side too, both Scania and some others. Volvo has some big powered engines too. I saw something on a YouTube video that Volvo has a, I thought it was a 13 liter. It did, I don't know for sure, but they've got an inline six cylinder engine that's going to be over a thousand horsepower. Um, and uh, Bruce, the American YouTuber, he's been meat dealing with Scania. He's looking at the S13 engine, which will be available in some international truck, in trucks in the U.S. A lot of Scania parts on that, and it's making, um, it's making good power. Uh, supposedly doesn't require a DPF filter, or I'm sorry, EGR. I'm sorry, it doesn't require an EGR or EGR cooler. Uh, it's running like 21 to 21 to 21 to 1 compression, which is very high for a modern diesel. And I guess that high compression burns off stuff. I don't know. It was kind of interesting. So that's going to be available in some 2025 international trucks here in the U.S. Exhaust manifolds at Scania. There were some other Scania parts on that engine. And I guess it's been in use for a couple of years in Europe. Like I said, I think before I end the video, I think, I think Scania might end up starting to move into the U.S., uh, which would be cool. We could use some competition. Kick some of the other domestic makers in the ass a little bit. Of course, Volvo's been here for years. They own Mac, and um, they have a plant in the Virginia area.
area, someplace on I-81. Slow it down just a little bit. Here. It's a pretty unsafe place to pass on around a blind corner. Dumbass four wheeler. This is my least favorite time to drive, like right as the sun's starting to go down when it's dusk. Turn left. So it's got automatic high beams, that's nice. It's one thing I, I kind of want to drive that Volvo again at night. Apparently that new uh, FH Volvo, 2022 Volvo, uh, has really nice stock headlights in it. So I was kind of interested to see what that looked like at night. I'll have to drive it again. Give that a whirl. With this Scania with all those lights on the front, man, it's amazing at night. You get onto an empty stretch and it turns that on and it's just like daylight. It's pretty awesome. Speaking of that, um, I ran across another video series. I'll, again, I'll try to remember to put the link. Uh, you can look for uh, Australian Outback, Road Train. Um, some guy, U.S. American guy, goes on a uh, two-day, two or three-day trip with a uh, truck driver from Australia doing a road train. And um, that the Australian guy has his own YouTube channel as well. But uh, showed off some of the lights they have on that thing. It was amazing. And then exit right. It was like low beam, high beam, and then like all the beams. <laughs> and it had lights on the right. top shining down and around and uh, you, it, it lit at least like an eighth of a mile down the road. At least. It was amazing. Get ready to turn right. Absolutely amazing. So it was kind of like a little little bit of a view into the life of a road train. Turn right. Really, dude? Right. 
right, and then turn right. Turn right. Turn left, and then turn right. Turn right. Turn right. Oh, fuck. Ow, oh, we're supposed to go. Oh. I hate how the, the flashers go on. When there's a suspected collision, that car was sitting right there and thought I was going to hit him. Kind of nice, but also kind of a pain in the ass. I've been to this lot before. It's kind of a bizarre. It's all over. It's all over. Where the fuck is the... There it is. <laughs> Alright, that's where they want it, of course. Right there on the other side of that uh, trailer. So let's, uh, let's look around this thing just a little bit at night. Like, <laughs> kind of cool though, that front axle, that front drop axle steers, you can see it's angled there. And actually, so does the, uh, the, uh, the two back axles on this trailer also steer. Which is so you can see them angled right there. Super cool. We don't have that stuff in the U.S. Uh, except on like um, the super long, um, the one trailers with like the multiple joints that pivot, uh, and some of those have axles that pivot. But this stuff's really cool. You see this on just regular box van uh, van trailers in Europe. Um, yeah, it complicates the design of the trailer, but it also really saves on the tires. You know, and by the way, this beacon thing here on the back that's pretty cool but it's also annoying because you're driving along and when it's completely dark out and you'll happen to see the flashing in your side mirrors you're like oh shit what's that <laughs> what's that and it's like oh yeah it's the beacon now let's put this thing where it needs to go Great, right there. Yay! That's gonna be fun! Actually, it will be. I don't know how to screw this up properly. Maybe not. Kind of bizarre putting this big ass bulldozer thing like you you would never drop this in a dock like this you know it would be in a in a in a flat area this is where the steering wheels a lot nicer because it just makes it it makes you be more smooth when you're backing into a dock. And also my truck driving training comes into play. You know, you're turning the, you're turning the steering wheel the way you actually would in real life. Instead of a stick. I fucked this up, didn't I? Maybe not. No, I did. No, I did. Space, but this dock is a little bit weird too because it's angled downward. So if you leave it in, if you uh, it, it'll you can speed out of control down the hill because the dock there we go because the dock is um, uh, angled downward. Okay. 
Video number two, that is a Scania 770, I believe. Once again. Then I'll show you. You can uh, lift the uh, cue. Oh, wrong one. the tag axle going up. Let's see it go up. And then on the trailer back here. Look at this. Watch this back tire. Cool. Like I said, with this, this is a stretchable trailer right there in the middle. It extends. I don't know whether you'd ever actually need it to extend, um, but when it's collapsed, it's exactly the same length as the regular three-axle trailer, and those three axles in the front are exactly where they are on the other trailer. So the nice thing is, theoretically, it would give you more weight, more length, but when it's collapsed and that rear axle is up, it isn't any longer or more difficult to drive or turn any different than the other trailer. So, I thought, why not do that? To extend it, though, um, is it? No. Okay, guys, well, apparently I accidentally paused the video, and I don't know where I paused it. So, it happened just now. I happened to look up, and it said resume. Um, what I was trying to do is show you guys how you extend the trailer, and I actually couldn't figure out how to do it, so it doesn't matter. Um, so, anyway. All right, guys. Um, have a good day. 1097-1701 signing off. Talk to you later. Be safe out there.